Hey folks, I'm Saeed, the Coder Grammar, and in this video, we are gonna look at Kong API Gateway. Now we're just gonna be looking at getting it set up, up and running in the kind of easiest way possible, because from there, you can have a play around with it and get to know much more. So what is Kong API Gateway? Now we're not gonna go into a lot of detail because this is about getting up and running quickly, but just a few key points. Now imagine you have a bunch of microservices with their own URLs and request requirements and all kinds of other stuff. It's nice to have a single configurable entry point for those services. Now Kong API Gateway is one such entry point. It can do routing, auth, rate limiting, rerouting, reverse proxying, all kinds of useful stuff. Now, when we're working with Kong, there's a few kind of high level components you need to be aware of. You have something called services. Now, these are the definitions of the services that you want to expose from the gateway. You might define headers, the path, the host, the port, that kind of thing. Then you have routes, and this is where you define the entry points and request matching rules so that incoming requests can match the appropriate route and therefore the appropriate service. You have plugins. These can sometimes be third party Kong plugins. These provide things like auth, OAuth2, rate limiting, and all kinds of other services. And there's probably more plugins being written as we speak. You have consumers. A consumer is any app that is using the service that you expose from Kong. And imagine you have security tokens and that kind of thing. You might configure that in the consumer section for a particular consumer. Now let's jump straight into the setup so we can get up and running. So we've got this handy instruction guide here on the Kong website. I'll put a link to this in the description. For our purposes, we're going to be looking at the OSS version, open source software version, because it's, well, it's free and we like free software. And we're going to run it in Docker because again, it's easy and it should work consistently across different platforms. So you can click on here and you can see the various images that you've got access to. But let's just jump back to where we were. And if we scroll down, we've got various options for installing Kong. We can install it with a database, which means that we can use the admin API to register new services, routes, etc. But to keep things simple, we have the option to install it without a database, the DB less mode. Okay, so let's do that because it's simpler. Now, first things first, we are going to run this command here to create the appropriate network. So I'll just copy that and we'll head over to a terminal and run that command. Okay, and you can see that that's created. Okay, then we have some instructions here about creating a config file. Okay, I've already done that and I'll show you that in a second. And this just points to a default service. Won't worry too much about that just yet, but we have to create that kong.yaml file. Then when we run the docker run command, we have to modify this to give it the path to where that file is located, the actual folder path. And then we have to actually give it the full path of that file. And the other thing that we're going to change is we're going to lose the detached mode because the detached mode means that we don't get immediate feedback if something goes wrong. So if we've got a mistake in our Kong YAML file, it's just easier if you don't run it in detached mode to begin with. All right, so here is my modified Docker run command, which is modified just as I mentioned just now. So this is the directory where the Kong.yaml file is located. And this is the full path to the Kong.yaml file. Now, if we just have a look at the Kong.yaml file, at the moment, there's no difference between this one and the one that you found just here. Okay, so now we're just going to copy this command and you can see I've lost the hyphen D for detached mode. Let's just copy that. Okay, and we'll just run that, paste that in there and run that. Okay, that looks promising. Right now, in order to test this, we could use curl to see that it's up and running, but there's actually a tool called Insomnia, which I've already downloaded, and I'll put a link in the description below of how you can download that. But this is a tool provided by Kong, and it's just quite handy and quite easy to use, so we'll just stick with that. All right, now the first thing we're gonna do, just to check that it's alive, we're gonna call the Kong base URI. Now the admin API can be accessed on port 8001. Any kind of routing that we're gonna do will be accessed on port 8000. Just to show you why, let's go back to this command here. You can see that these are the ports that are exposed. So 8000 is for the application routing, any kind of actual routes that we define. And 8001 is for admin. Let's not worry about the others for now. All right, so let's hit send on that request there. And you can see that you get a bunch of stuff back, including welcome to Kong and just all kinds of other stuff, which is probably more than we care about right now but at least it shows that it's alive. Now let's just have a look at a few of the built-in endpoints that we've got that we can use to query the admin APIs. Okay, and then we invoke the services endpoint. So you can see this is the mockbin.org one. Now if I go back to the kong.yaml file, if you see we have one service defined here, which is the host is mockbin.org and it's an example service. It comes in the Kong configuration as you get it as in this kind of example, just to get you up and running quickly. And the service is using port 80, it's a HTTP service. The root name is example root and the path is slash mock. Okay, so we'll come to test that shortly, but you can see that the service is registered there. Now let's check roots. Let me just clear this, clear history. If I kick that off. Okay, you can see that the root is defined there slash mock and endpoints. This just gives you a list of 
a whole bunch of admin endpoints that you've got to create all kinds of stuff, create, query, delete, all kinds of stuff. We'll check for plugins and we haven't got any plugins. We'll check for consumers. We haven't defined any consumers. Okay. All right. So now let's just quickly go back to the default service. Now this should be accessible on this path and it should route to mockbin.org. So let's just give that a try. Now I've already got that configured here. So let's call mockbin. I'll just click on there and you can see that's got the slash mock URL. Hit send and you can see that it returns the mockbin.org website. All good. All right, so that's all fine with stuff we get out of the box. How about our own microservice or our own service, which we want to route to? So in order to demonstrate such a scenario, I've created a very, very simple Spring Boot application. I used start.spring.io, the website, to generate this project. And I just added a REST controller with a very simple serve endpoint mapping for a GET request, okay? So just to prove that this works, let's go to the browser and see if we can access it directly. OK, and that prints out the word served. OK, not particularly useful, but it's just there to demonstrate a point. And that's what we wanted and that's what we got. OK, so this is a very simple microservice running on port 8080. So let's see how we can configure this and get Kong to route to this service as well as the mockbin.org service. So here's our existing mockbin.org service. So we need to add our new service to this list. So here we have the configuration for our new service. So let's just go through this quickly. Now the new service that I've started, the Spring Boot service, is running on my local machine. It's not running within the Docker network. It's very easy to create Docker images from Spring Boot applications. There's a built-in way of doing that now via Maven or Gradle. And you could add that Docker image to the network that Kong is running in. Okay, the network that we created at the beginning of this process. But just to keep things simple, I haven't done that in this tutorial. Instead, what we're doing is using this special URL, this host.docker.internal, which allows Docker containers to access services running on the host machine. Okay, so this is just a service running on the host machine. Now that Spring Boot service is running on port 8080. We've given it a name, which we don't really care about at this point. The path is slash serve, which is the same path we used in the browser. The path we want to expose via Kong is slash SB. So we don't want to use slash serve. We want to change it to SB, and that's what we're going to use Kong for. We set it to strip path. Now these kind of parameters like strip path and others, you can play around with to get the correct configuration that you need. There's a page in the Kong documentation which shows you how you might go about configuring these settings to get the right mapping URL that you're looking for. But for our simple use case, we hope that this will work. Now, let's take this out again and go back to Insomnia and just prove that we can't currently access the slash SB URL until we've actually done the configuration. All right, so I already have a request set up here. So if I click on that, you can see that it's going to slash SB. That's the configuration we wanted Kong to expose. If I click send on there, it says no routes match with those values because we haven't done the configuration yet. Now imagine we want to publish that configuration, but without updating this YAML file because it's a bit tedious. We'd need to restart the Docker containers, that kind of thing. So let's see if we can do it from Insomnia directly. So we go here to the slash services endpoint and we make a post request with the same parameters that we had in the config earlier. And let's send that and see if that will do the trick for us. All right, we've hit send. But unfortunately, we get a message saying cannot create service entities when not using a database. OK, now remember, we're running in DB less mode because we're lazy and we just want to get things up and running. So this would normally be an option, but because we're running in DB less mode, this is not an option for us. So let's abandon this, go back to the configuration here, bring it back, save that. And now let's go and restart our Docker containers. So first things first, I'll hit control C on that. I'll run these commands, which you can find in the documentation to just clean up that Docker container and any other resources. All right, that's done. Now let's create the network again. So we go back up to here and we say create network and let's actually start the container again. I'm just going to make sure the configuration is saved. All right, remember this is our start command that we modified based on where I've got the kong.yaml file located locally and I've removed the hyphen D for detached mode. All right, so that looks like that's come up. Now let's go back to Insomnia and see what happens now. So this time around, we'll go back to calling the SB service. Last time it said no route matched with those values. And let's hit send. Okay, now calling slash SB has matched a route. It's routed the request and returned us the appropriate response. Let's go back and have a look at that mapping. What we've done is call Kong with this path here. Kong has then matched that request and forwarded it onto this host with this port and this path. 
and return the response. And that's pretty much exactly what I wanted to demonstrate today. So I hope you can see that it's pretty easy to get started with Kong and start to have a play around. There's obviously a huge amount of configuration and other things that you can do, but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. Let me know in the comments below if you thought that was useful and let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you'd like to know about Kong and for me to go into more detail. Now, just before we end the video, I do want to say that there's also an option to run Docker Compose, which I'll put a link to in the description below if you find that easier. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. And if you found this video even remotely useful, please hit like and if you want to stay up to date with future similar tech content developer news tutorials that kind of thing make sure you hit subscribe thanks for watching